The first story mentioned in the surah, there are four stories in Surah Al-Kahf. First one mentioned is the people of the cave. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make mention of that story? They were tested with their religion and they did not give it up. They left community and society and they went away for 309 years. They were out locked and sealed in a cave as though they were bushmen or stonemen or whatever you'd like to call them. But their religion was saved. They made a dua to Allah. Oh Allah, grant us savior, protect us from this negative environment, from these people who are trying to take our religion away from us. They were saved. So if we are to learn a lesson from Surah Al-Kahf, we should learn a lesson that when it comes to protection of our religion, we should leave no stone unturned. Even if it means leaving and abandoning the place we are living in because we are being affected negatively and someone wants to take our religion away. We can go, no problem. Don't compromise that. That is what we learn from Surah Al-Kahf. The second story mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, very interestingly, the story of the two men, the man who had gar gardens and he had lots of wealth. And what did he say? We read the meaning of Surah Al-Kahf. It says, he said, all this I have been granted because of my own capacity, my brain. I worked hard and it's not going to be depleted. Not at all. So two main things. He related all the wealth he had to himself. That's a mistake. And secondly, he said, this is not going to be depleted. It's going to last forever. I don't think this is ever going to be depleted. Not at all. And I don't think that there is something known as the hour. How can there be an hour where things are going to come to an end when I'm enjoying so much here? I've got so much wealth and I've got this and that. And Allahu Akbar, he was given some guidance. That guidance is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf that, hey, look, for you it's best to say that this is not because of my brain, my capacity. Allah has blessed me. He has guided me in a certain direction. He has allowed me to earn all this. So these earnings are actually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's got nothing to do with me. I put in a small effort and Allah is the one who provided that is what we learn from Surah Al-Kahf. When it comes to wealth, that wealth is not mine or yours. It is Allah's. He owns it. Al-Malu Malullah. The wealth is the wealth of Allah, not mine or yours. We are only custodians of it. How much are we going to use? We are not going to be able to use more than a certain amount. It doesn't mean if you have a lot of wealth, you can now eat 10 times a day. You know, you, you, you have... The early breakfast, or the very early breakfast, the early breakfast, the breakfast, the late breakfast, the very late breakfast. Then the very early lunch, the, the early lunch, the lunch, the late lunch, the very late lunch. Just because you've got well, you become sick. No matter who you are, three is normally a maximum. Three good meals a day is normally a maximum. If you've had a good meal, one is enough. And if you want to have really good meals, the maximum is three. I don't know of anyone who can actually, unless they're not absolutely normal may Allah grant us inshallah uh, normal health and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa and cure to all those who are not well I don't think they could eat more than three times proper meals but they might have wealth if we build homes how many houses are we going to live in so this is what we need to realize the wealth Allah has made you a custodian of it just to see what do you do with this you need X amount what are you going to do with the rest of it? Your family members come first. Your relatives, those who cannot afford, even those who can afford, you'd like to make life a little bit easier for them. And thereafter, look around you, see the poor believers, so on. Then look at humanity at large and try and assist even the non-Muslims and so on. It's not wrong at all. In fact, it is encouraged, really. There are people out there, we share with them something in common, and that is humanity. They are human beings. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ goes even further. He says, after that, we need to consider even the animals. There is a reward in quenching the thirst of anything that has a liver. So the wealth and the test of wealth is made mention of in Surah Al-Kahf in a very beautiful way in story form. That Allah says, there was a man, this is what he did. He has blessed a lot of gardens. He thought that this is from myself. And he also thought it's going to last forever. And I am not going to go. And Allah says, that is wrong. 
a man told him, you're not supposed to have made that statement. No. And he had to rectify that statement of his by saying, no, this is definitely from Allah. لَكِنَّهُ Allah Rabbi. It is indeed Allah who is my Rabb. فَعَسَى رَبِّي أَن يُؤْتِيَنِ خَيْرًا مِّن جَنَّتِكَ The other man says, it, I am hoping from my Lord to give me that which is better than your gardens that you have here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So it is up to Allah. He can do what He wants. He can take away what He's given us or He can give us what He has not yet given us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of our goodness. The third test that is made mention of very interestingly is the story regarding the test of knowledge where Musa alayhi salam was asked a question. Who is the most knowledgeable? Being a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, yes, I have the most knowledge. He did not say it in a way to deny that Allah is the owner of knowledge and can bestow it upon anyone. But he felt Allah's bestowed it on me. I'm a Nabi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to rectify that, correct it, fine tune it slightly. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we want to show you someone who has more knowledge than you, not on a wholesome level, but certain categories of knowledge, we've granted him more. Like what happens with us, you have someone asks you, who's the most knowledgeable? And you say, that man, that's only in one field. But in another field, there's another man. And in the third field, there is another man. You have in the field of medicine, there might be a top doctor, but he might only be top in cardiology whereas you have a pediatrician who's an extremely brilliant doctor and he might be the best in that department so even in one field there are separate departments and Allah wanted to show subhanahu wa ta'ala that to Musa alayhi salam when it comes to the issue of knowledge we should realize what is right is right even if the whole world believes it's wrong it's correct when Islam has prohibited alcohol and intoxicants it will be prohibited even if the world is saying, no, it's okay. When Islam and Allah has prohibited homosexuality, it will be prohibited even if the whole world believes that no, there's nothing wrong with it. It will be wrong. We should never ever allow that knowledge of ours to be contaminated. We need pristine, pure knowledge. So the story is made mention of how Musa alayhi salam met Al-Khidr. And when he met Al-Khidr, certain things happened. I'm sure we must have heard those verses in Taraweeh and we will still be hearing them this evening part of those verses inshallah. And I think we, we are moving in sync throughout Cape Town inshallah when it comes to the Taraweeh. So the lesson we learn from that is always search for knowledge. Never think that I've arrived now I know the most and I'm it. That's it. No. Search for knowledge and over and above that, make sure it is pure, pristine, uncontaminated knowledge. And hunt for it and ask and keep on asking until you are satisfied of the source of the knowledge that this is now from Allah. We must never be satisfied with the level of knowledge we have, never. Al-ilmu bahrun la sahila lah. We've heard so many times, knowledge is an ocean that has no coast. So if we have sat at a coast, what we have is something that is not knowledge. Then we have the fourth test that is made mention of in the same surah, the test of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Dhul Qarnayn in Surah Al-Kahf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how powerful he was. But he was a person who did not abuse that power. Not at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we gave him authority and we told him, Listen to the power of this verse, the power of it. Allah says, we told Dhul Qarnayn after giving him so much power, we told him, Dhul Qarnayn, you now have the power. Do what you want. You can either punish people, you can either let them loose, you can either be good to them, you can, you can do what you want, you have the power. Because he feared Allah, what happened? He says, Allah 
وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء الحسنى وسنقول له من أمرنا يسرا power power of the verse Allah says ذو القرنين he knew that he could do whatever he wanted but he had the fear of Allah so he says oh Allah as for those who have oppressed and done wrong we will ensure that justice prevails to the degree that we will punish the one who deserves to be penalized we will punish those who deserve to be penalized and when they get to you you can then punish them or you can then decide to forgive them or you can do whatever you want ya allah but we will try our best to uphold justice and to penalize those who deserve punishment and as for those who believe and do good deeds there are so many of them and we will never be able to recompense them as a leader i will not be able to recompense those who do good so the minimum we will try our best to utter a good word to them so that at least they feel acknowledged and they know that they have done correct but you will then reward them ya allah according to your own measures now look at the statement of a just ruler from this we learn and there are many more examples i've just cut it down short to fit into the the minutes that we do have from this we definitely learn that dhul qarnain and his example is for us that whenever allah has given you power you might be able to do what you want you can punish you know you have a maid working for you for example or anybody working for you sometimes you can hire and fire as you wish but you remember one thing when you have been given power you will only achieve righteousness when you've protected yourself from that that jal force which makes you feel that you can do what you wish you will only do what allah wishes we fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want the savior from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we know that if we have been given power on land allah is even more powerful than us now when we read the surah surah al-kahf and we see all four angles and aspects and we see that when it comes to the test of religion we should not shake and when it comes to the test of wealth we relate it to allah and we should not seek it from anyone besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when it comes to the test of knowledge we should ensure that we seek pristine pure knowledge and that it is not contaminated we don't allow the media houses to con us with their stories about our own brethren no matter where they are on the globe and fourthly whenever we've been given authority on land we should remember fear allah regarding that authority use your days in that position in such a way that when you lose that position people will miss you and people will say subhanallah there was a man he did the most in his reign and he did the most when he was sitting at the top and he we achieved the most when he was there we don't want to be people whom as you see on the globe today the minute they get a bit of power their pockets become so big that they extend from the waist all the way to the ankles allah safeguard us which means all they're interested in is yes brother and as they as they're talking to you they're filling their pockets and yes brother okay we'll do something about that and they're filling their pockets because they know we're sitting on position if this is going to go we're not going to have another opportunity to fill our pockets rather fill them now allahu akbar allahu akbar like they say there was a man <laughs> this is on a lighter note he always wanted to be an assistant an assistant assistant of the leader why they say no it's better to be the assistant the assistant they never understood why he says, what I did, I made a hole at the bottom of his pocket and I walked behind him. MashaAllah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors, to grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our offspring. And may he make this a means of our closeness to the Quran. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.